some boss talk one-on-one. One -on -one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing. Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Not number Man, hey, we got a special guest in here, man. He really yes, don't need sir. no introduction. He's been here. He frequents the show. That's how I get to messing around when somebody just come a couple of times. He's a frequent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check it, man. My boy DeRoe. Music is in the building. 6'3". Uh -huh. What's going on, man? Ah, uh, man, I'm good. You know, I'm recovering from uh that 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 whole man. Cowboy lost. Didn't it hurt? Didn't it hurt? Didn't it hurt? Mm. Yeah, man. We weren't supposed to get out there no first round. Man, man don't know. you? We don't, don't got no business losing to the 49ers don't and you, Dallas. What you think about it, man? When we going to make it, man? Man, honestly, you know, uh, I, I don't know what's up with this year. We we lost all our home games, man. You know what I'm saying? We won all the away games. You know, we got the squad. I don't know. You, you, I, what I see, we just ain't coming out there with that energy. You feel me? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we coming out there timid. You feel me? We, we build on the second end. Yeah. But, uh. Man, I don't, I don't really want to. I don't really want to <laughs> say what I really want to say, man. I, I, shout out to the boy. Shout out to the. Shout out to the star. Shout out to the cowboy, man. You know, overall they still had a good season. Every team don't make it to the yeah, playoffs, but yeah. yeah, we we need to change that narrative. You feel me? We 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 should at least definitely got to the second round for sure. But yeah. uh, you know, it, people want to see the cowboys take their stretch now. You know what I'm saying? You think it, it's yeah. been too long? Yeah, it's been too long. You were so mad yesterday because you're like I get at home, of let down, especially man. at home. They shouldn't have been playing like that at home. Facts, they facts. didn't. They didn't come out there like especially like, against the 49ers. They ain't, man. The 49ers like, play on a fast pace. Yeah, they did, but they ain't that special of a team. Like the Cowboys, I don't, of course I'm gonna say this because I'm biased, but they're the better <laughs> team. You feel me? But like I tell everybody, when it comes to football in the playoffs, man, it's whoever play that day. It's it's exactly. a whole new season. Anybody can be get beat in the see basketball seven games. The best team gonna win. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But in football, the best team that day gonna win. You know what I'm saying? You can That's be a true. way better team. You know what I'm saying? We saw that that year. Uh, new England went undefeated and then lost to the Giants, who was eight and eight. That was in bad. the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they came that day. Whoever mm -hmm. come on that day. So the Cowboy, we didn't show up to the second half. You know what I'm saying? And uh, in the playoffs, you just can't do that. You know, yeah. we was playing from behind. Even though we supposed to got that last play of the game, though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And we was playing against the refs, you know. But uh, we supposed to at least get that little last play at 24-yard line. You know what I'm saying? And they He ran into the ref, and they said the game was over. Man, I seen you out there, man. I I, I was I, I seen y'all. I seen you. I was like, yeah. man, my I, boy out there. I, I need to be. I had action at it, though. I had action at some 50-yard line tickets. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't go in on them. You know, I should have went in on them, but, but I didn't. Yeah. I, I should have been now, right there gonna, with you. I wasn't going to miss that game out of all the games, man. You know, uh. I probably hit half the home games this year, you know what I'm saying, when, I, when I'm in town. Try and hit it. I try and hit all of them, but I don't always be in the city, but I wasn't missing that one. You still got a deal, <laughs> yeah. like like uh, uh, some kind of agreement with the Cowboys? Yeah, yeah. We we actually uh, read up the deal maybe two months ago. Okay. I went out, yeah, we, uh, Congrats. They signed in for the uh, big touchdown to license that record, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, you know, awesome. After my deal, so we read up the deal. So we, uh, we actually was going to shoot a video for big touchdown. So if we would have won this game, the next game would have been away in Tampa, but it was, they was going to do a watch party at the stadium, AT&T Stadium. Yeah. They were going to do a watch party for the Cowboys, and we was going to shoot the majority of the video that week, uh, I mean, at the game. And then uh, even if they would have lost, with the Cowboys, we always do everything like a year ahead. So we would have shot it, and then we would have put it out at the preseason of this next season. Next season. season. Which we still gonna do, but now we now I'm gonna have to shoot the video at the preseason game, you know what I'm saying? Which is still cool. So, uh, but long story short, you know we doing the whole merch thing, the merch, the song, and the pregame performances. You know I did we played Arizona at the last home game before this one. Uh, they booked me for a pregame performance. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, next year we're trying to get that halftime though. We're trying to get. Ah, sure, hope sure. so, man. Yeah, I want to yeah. see you rock out on halftime. On. Man. So once once we once we put out that big touchdown video. At the top of the season and uh, get that role, and then we're gonna we're gonna talk about the halftime show. Man, sure, that's sure. dope, man. You gotta feel proud, man, because I don't see nobody with that type of action dealing with the you know with NFL teams, man. That's that's not that's few and far in between, right? Is yeah, there nah, anybody was, else that nah, got something the, going nah, on? Nah, nah, it was the first the deal I did was the first NFL to hip hop deal ever. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever done one. 
you know, the NBA dabble in with some with some hip hop and uh, Chance the Rapper had did something with a baseball team out there with the White Sox or Red Sox, whichever one, the mm-hmm, Chicago team. Mm-hmm. But nobody ever, you know, uh, done anything with football, NFL. And, you know, it's a, it's a conservative sport, sport. And, and, and especially when you talk about the Cowboys. So it ain't really just that, it, you know, they wasn't that open to hip hop from the jump. But, yeah. you know, 2013, I, they. I came with like the right type of music. Came with the with the grind hustle, and they was already aware of the brand. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, that, city, and it you know helped that you're from here. Exactly. You know, so I had a lot of fans within the organization. You know what I'm saying? All that's in the cowboy organization, the business marketing, and all that. So when they they started looking for, I guess they they kind of wanted to like step out the country. I mean, they're gonna always do the country music, but they want to add on to that. And a lot of people within the organization was like, "Hey, we should get the road." to do an anthem and then that somebody reached out, we put it together and it just started snowballing. So I did that in uh, 2016, we did the first real deal. And uh, you know what I'm saying, we just re-up on it every year, every other year, change the incentives, do different things and now we back at it. You feel so it's a yearly deal? Yeah, 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 it's, okay. you know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's, a, it's a situation where, you know, uh, they support me, you feel me? And then we, and we rock out, you know, sometimes they come with, different situations and you know if I approach them and be like hey this would be a dope idea we should do this boom they with it you know what I'm saying That's so good. do you ever do anything with the players uh the players are tricky because I learned this the first year I did an anthem so the first anthem I did in 2013 is called this our town we went all out with the cowboy they shot it but uh in my mind then you know what I'm saying been, been, been the first time I was like, I'm going to show the players love you know I was naming like Dez Bryant I think I named uh, the, uh not the Barkus Lawrence but uh I forgot who else we had. We had somebody. Uh, we had somebody. I, I named, and then the next year they they was traded. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Dez went was traded the year after that. Somebody else I forgot our name was in there, and boom! So that anthem still stays. Still use that, but those names are irrelevant. So I started learning to make it more generic. You that know makes what I'm sense. So, so on the music side, you know what I'm saying? I really try and keep everything generic. Just cowboy, the city. What represent me, you know what I'm saying, and uh, I learned that. But as far as the players, like outside the uh, outside of that, you know, yeah, you know, I, I done been to a, a, a few uh, cowboy like orange events, you know what I'm saying. We kicked the meat, Dak, Zeke, all them. You, you know was what I'm the big boy. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> of course. But you know, at the same time, with, with, I, I try and, with me, and, and I'm just being real, like. I know uh, one of my closest homies, Michael Crabtree. You know, yeah, 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 him. yeah. He uh, Ty Harris talked about him. Yeah, the other yeah, week. yeah, yeah. Shout out to <laughs> he Ty. was here the other yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, we 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 got some we got some stuff coming with Ty, man. Matter of okay, fact, that's cool. man, Ty just did a record. We I think we shooting that video next week too. You know I like Ty. He's he's so uh, he a humble dude, mm-hmm. and, but he's straightforward too. He ain't yeah, playing yeah, no he's very talented. Yeah, very real talented. artist. He yeah, he's a real you know artist. Uh, I like the fact you're doing work with people here in Dallas. Yeah, facts. No, I like I like people like Ty because. You know he's he's something that the city need. You know, uh, you know he he a real artist. Uh, mm-hmm. He made good music. He just all around with it. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, he humble. Very humble. But uh, but at the same time, uh, hungry. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, coming from the city, you got to have that kind of grime in you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And, and he got that. But uh, nah, I, I mean, homie. When I heard him, when I heard him, see, I'm the type of person where I see I get sold on the art. I, if you dope enough, you know what I'm saying? And, and I really think you a Cold artist, then yeah, we're gonna work, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he came through the studio when Crabtree brought him through the studio. Uh, we had met at the studio, and uh, you know, he was just basically show, showcasing what he could do, and 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 I, and I was impressed, you feel me, homie, homie got it, you know. So, it was only right for us to get some work in, but shout out to Ty, shout out to Crabtree. So, is there you know? anybody else in Dallas that you are um gonna start working with other than him? Uh, I mean, my all my producers for the most part are from Dallas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, over the years, man, I done pretty much worked with everybody, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, me and three got records that, you know, some out, well, one out, I got records on release with three I ain't put out yet, you know You gonna put them out? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put it out, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm gonna put the record out, well, I got, I got a, I got a, a fire track with three that, that I'm gonna put out, you know, at some, at some point, you know what I'm saying, more than likely it'll be this year, uh, you know, man, Trap got some. Uh, I been. I mean, just all throughout the years, at some point, man, Tom Tom just did something new. You know, what I'm I got to get Tom Tom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I almost had him uh, yeah. before yeah. the end. You're in. Oh yeah, yeah. Now nah, you got to get Zilla. Yeah, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna yeah, get him. Yeah, yeah. It's only a matter of time now. Yeah. So, any East yeah. Texas, any, any East Texas artists you worked with? 
East Texas, nah, I ain't, from, I ain't familiar with no well, East Texas Well, you performed, artists. walked that walk at the at the uh, Funk and Roll Club on 59 because <laughs> the guy who owned it was here and he said it. That oh, yeah, no, no. Nah, nah. Oh, so I done, yeah, no. <laughs> no, he's no, 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 yeah, there, yeah, but he just ain't never oh, worked yeah, nah, with nobody. Yeah, a lot of that there, he shows, uh, I rock with uh, Tyler, uh, Marshall. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was it. That's uh, where yeah, it was view, all, Yeah, yeah. They, they that was you. You had just started back then. Yeah, and over the years, they always show, look, like I always at some point, Go back, even if it's to the TJC, just just some will come up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I haven't worked with no artist yet. I haven't, I don't think I ever came across. I, I mean, I'm pretty he sure has they got. Smooty, he's from East Texas, but he just got signed with 1501. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, so it's he, a, yeah it's I mean, I know it's talent, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Like, I know it's, it's, it's out there. It's sporadic as hell now, though. You don't know what's coming from where. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can come up and just come from anywhere and just rap. That's one of the uh, pros of the internet. Internet, you know yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't matter where you're from, you feel me? You pretty Before much we get off that internet. football, though, I got to go back because uh, shout out to Boss Man Fat. I've been trying to, you know, he rap. Boss man, fat. He on the he on the squad. He's new on on, okay. on the Cowboys. You got to look him okay. up, okay. and you got to inspire him to go and bring bring oh, some yeah? music. Right. You have to find him. Just find him. Yeah. Boss man, fat. I we talked. I DM'd him a few times. He was like, man, uh, get with my PO. I said, nigga, I need an interview. He loved. I think he came from. He was good in college. He's a a, a cornerback, I believe. Mm-hmm. But he he was good in college. But he liked rap. I'm telling you, you got to check him out. Okay, nah. but he ain't he hiding it now. Uh, yeah, you know, Jerry won't yeah, let that nigga yeah, rap right now. Yeah, facts, you wrap his facts, hand around facts. in football, and try to facts, <laughs> man. And that's another thing. Yeah, you know, I try and get a, the players their space, man. Cause I know that world. That's what I was getting at. I, I know that world. Like, uh, it's real. Uh, you if you're an athlete and then you start getting enticed into or getting exploited into like other sides of inter- entertainment. We saying that now with AB, but this it's kind of a different case. That's a good thing on one end, but like the 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 sports or they shot they 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 shun that you know what I'm saying they and they mind they think that you can't be this and that or if you doing this you can't be that focused doing that you feel me which really ain't true it's just yeah. mm-hmm. so you know what I'm saying like I, I said it to say is sometimes when athletes get seen with rappers to the organization it ain't the best look you know what I'm saying I know and I, and I learned that firsthand you feel me like, yeah no I get it. Like, but you know it is you know it is what it is. And then we come in, and then the Cowboys is that's we the Cowboys, mm-hmm. well conservative team. Reputation. You feel me? So it's like it, it really ain't like you know this ain't the Atlanta Falcons. You know what I'm saying? Where they might get. You know what I'm saying? Taylor just talked about that. Yeah, Taylor Gabriel. Yeah, he yeah, said different. When, <laughs> when he saying? went down there from Cleveland, he was like, "This is he home." He went to Atlanta and he said they was like they was <laughs> they at were Magic City in the dressing dice room. Yeah, yeah, everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's, you know it's different cultures. You feel? Yeah, yeah. So you know? no, but you mentioned A B. What did you think about what? I was going to ask that. A.B., uh, when he did first that. Of all, mm-hmm. First of all, you know, uh, I, I've seen a lot of A.B., you know, throughout his football career. He 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 literally one of the best receivers to come through the game. You know what I'm saying? So I respect him on that side. And, and I feel like uh, now as far as this little scenario, I ain't re- I, I don't really know too much in insight. Because nobody know this. what happened. Yeah, you why? can't really, you know, people don't say it different there, but you really don't know what happened, you know, and why this, this, and that. So I can't really say if homie was this or that on that situation. But as far as just the whole thing, I mean. Because there's a lot of politics in football. It is. It is a lot of politics. And I, and I think A.B. is just one of those guys, like, you get very few people like A.B. A.B., the only person that really did that and was full-on successful was Deion Sanders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, you know what I'm saying, you playing both sides. You you athlete and then you, you know, you're a star, you're entertaining, you, you, you know, you rapping, you, you, or you got that type of lifestyle. Yeah. Only people pull that off in sports is Deion Sanders. That's and Alan, it. And Alan That's Iverson. it. And Alan Alan Iverson. Iverson. Them like the, to the, to that extent. But then you got people like AB who, you know, who, who have that persona, but like the NFL, unless one thing about Deion is he did what he did on the field. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. the whole time. I mean, he, I, from what I know, he he never really had no issues. It was easy for him. Yeah. Seemed seamless when he would play football. Yeah, exactly. You know, he was just he was just that guy. You feel mm-hmm. me? You know, Muhammad Ali was that guy. He yeah. talked it. That showboat. But, yeah, but he 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 backed it up. So it's mm-hmm. like you got to do that the whole time. In the moment where they can find this and that, man, they gon' they they don't. From my perspective, but they they don't like particularly them type of players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But they feel they, like they can't control you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So if you that type of player, you got to really control your narrative and you just got to make them respect you. That's what a Deion Sanders did. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, no matter what he did out, out the field, when he got on the field, 
He he was that dude, yeah, and, and, and he never really had a decline in his career. Mm-hmm. And that you can't do without me. You can't find another one of me yeah, right now. Yeah, well, Dion, Dion is one of the unique players ever. Right. Ever. So, right. like, uh, and he never had a decline in his career. Exactly. You feel me? He did this on this team and this team and came to the Cowboys and did this and everywhere. So, it's just like he made but, – but just say if he wasn't doing that on the field but was having a lifestyle, they would have gave him – he would have had all type of problems. Right. So it's just like the balance, you know what I'm saying? And, and like I say, I don't, I don't think A.B. couldn't do that, but I think that uh, just a different type of different Do you system. think his career is done? Uh, <laughs> Talent-wise, no. I, uh, you know, as far as if he got it, he could play at the highest level, definitely. He still got it. To play. So it's just more about, man, I think he needs to play with some. I think he needs to be over there with, like, Carolina, the panel. He needs to be with, like, a Cam Newton or something like it's just it's all about the system. The or as far as just yeah, the, the, a lot of I would say the majority of NFL ruled him out. Mm-hmm. But I you know I still feel like he's he's so talented of a player that it's, it's that it's, some team will like, need give one him, team. Yeah, they'll it, give it's, him a it's, chance. It's, oh, it's definitely a team or two or three or four that's like we can use that. You feel me? And if they if they if they feel like the root of it is not necessarily what people think it is, then they they might take that chance. But I can see some teams where he could he will fit. And uh, those teams will be smart to pick up an AB, uh, and I think he still he, he said he want to play football. You know, he still want to play football, but because the flip wanna. side of it to me would be like any team that pick him up, I would think that he would be going out there and playing all his heart out because he going in for revenge against anybody. Facts, you facts. know what I mean to show. Facts. Well, and then he he just that dude too on that field. Like he ain't he he got it. It's just when you got it like that, you just gonna go out there and you are gonna play. Especially if you get the opportunities and you get with the right system, right, mm-hmm. right, right team. people that you like playing with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he fit in, then you'll see a whole different type exactly. of player. So if he can find that, yeah. But as far as just the NFL and what I know about the NFL, man, uh, they they. They trying to rule homie out, yeah. Just because they don't want to deal with that type of persona, they don't want to. Uh, what you? They don't want to cultivate that persona. You feel me? They but, feel like they can't control. They wouldn't be. Well, able to yeah. They, I guess they don't want to inspire AB like players. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know what I'm saying. If they if they got that if they got them A B skills then you gotta let the players be sometimes letting the players just be that, be a certain way let them be a dog they, yeah they get they, out there they get out there Ball. yeah like a Deion Sanders I yeah. feel like the stuff he was doing off the field inspired him on the field you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah yeah he, he said a lot too you know he always like dress good feel good play good you know what I'm saying he, he Deion Sanders was a player that was inspired by the stuff that he was doing off the field. To go on the field and you know what I'm saying and expand on that, so yeah. So do you do you feel like all the uh, getting over to just the music a little bit? Do you feel like Dallas? How, how do you feel about how the music is going in the city right now? Uh, I can only really speak on what I'm doing and what I'm about to do. Hey, you got your ears I, to the yeah, you I got know, your ears to the streets. I, I know I'm for the light the city up. You feel me with, with the music? But nah, the t- see one thing about city the Dallas, but the city of Dallas is. It always been here. The talent, the the style, the the you know what I'm saying, the charisma, all that, you know, the the uniqueness, the sound, you feel me? Always has been in Dallas. We always hit that. And uh, that'll always be here. So when somebody asks me how I feel about this the city of Dallas or the state, I feel it, at any given moment it can spark just cause you got all these different variables here. Like anybody can get you knows who 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 come with what they come with can get it popping because this is a big city. With a lot of talent, and you know what I'm saying, we got a lot of, you know, history, and we got a, uh, you know, people that have been putting on for us. So it's, I feel like it's actually easier to come out of Dallas right now than it is in uh, any other time. But it's just for the the state of it right now. I mean, every, it, it, I mean, I guess you can say it's kind of quiet in one way. Mm-hmm. But the talent here, you feel me? And yeah. As long as that's the here and and the people here, which the people gonna be here, more people moving here. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff going on. You know, COVID since COVID. The population of life. Yeah. So I, I, to me, you just got to know. I think the city getting bigger. I think the, the, uh, the, uh, what you call it, the eyes on, I think That's it's more, I think I'm more it tied more to eyes yeah, of, it's, it's, Especially because I've heard a lot of people say that Texas have the biggest blog bloggers out here. Yeah, in Dallas. More, so yeah, because Dallas, of that, Texas, also, uh, East Texas, it's bringing that. more eyes out here. And a lot of people are putting music industry people on their platforms. Uh-huh. So it's making more people look at them, people who they've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Coming up, new artists. So they're like, oh, okay. And go listen to their music. So I think that also helps with putting eyes on people here. 
Yeah. Facts, facts. Yeah. Yeah, now nah, I see I see it like I guess people see everything different. Yeah, but and I, that's, that's I a see fact. it in the you know what I'm saying, in the in the best places ever been. Just cause I know where I, it came from? Nah, just cause I know that as from a music standpoint and an artist standpoint and a rapper standpoint, it can get popping quick. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You got a lot of seeds in the place, it can get popping quick. So even when shit is died down or it ain't no momentum, I know that can change in a matter of a month or two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I look at a city whether if they got talent or not, do they got enough seeds for anything to even manifest into something. You can pick up some cities and they just don't got enough of what cities like even our city got, you know, mm -hmm. enough real unique. Because I think rapping is about uniqueness more than anything. You know, people, they got their own every Sound, style, brand, style, yeah. style, whatever, something that, that is more about that. And Dallas produce those, you know what I'm saying? We do, when a, when, a, when an artist come out the city and make some type of noise, they normally have their own that identity, you know what I'm but saying? But how can you know it's somebody out of here? Because like we were talking about earlier, that internet is so big that when an artist come up, you might not know exactly where they're from. Facts. So how Facts. do you keep your eyes on Dallas artists? How do you search for them? How do Instagram. you find them? How do I do it? Yeah. Or just, in, oh, is me? My, well, you know, I'm so connected with everybody who's doing something in the city that it, it's just going to come. Like, it, 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 it probably haven't been nobody who ever came out the city who I didn't already know about Okay. Prior to Before You just pop. know You know what I'm saying Like There's no way you can For the most part There ain't no way You can just go from Cold to popping Most of the time You, you build yeah, enough, building up and you, you know what I'm saying So like You don't meet people In that build up It just Once they get to Quote unquote Mainstream Or to the world You know That's another That's another step And people think That's when they first Emerge But it's, it's hardly ever like that You know yeah. you, are, you you know what I'm saying It's just like how We just talking about Ty Ty might mm -hmm. be popping In some months Yeah But he been You know I, even, He been hustling Yeah you know what I'm saying So like I, w I would know about a Ty But just say He pop in the summertime To, to the world he just came out, but like we already, you know, been known. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. it'd it be like that, you know. It's, it's like that. Have you, know? you ever heard of uh, Big X the Plug? It's another guy that's, that he was just on here too, but he he real new. Nah, yeah. if I maybe if, maybe about the music, you know. Yeah, he I, got yeah. a deep voice. Oh, that's yeah. one thing I like. He yeah. has a deep voice. He, you don't he, hear he that very own, much. He got his own look. Oh, yeah. Very well, unique. Well, I know that's a plus having your own voice and, and like and you, rap. yeah, and yeah. humble. Yeah, having your own voice give you a, a real big advantage. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Your own just because people can. It's all about identity. Mm -hmm. People like people they can identify. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just what it's about. So identity. when I look at you um the, what i've seen uh here recently is i, I think i've seen you the bar baby song yeah you i was read just that, about, about to ask, ask about that, that. yes uh, we we had uh renetta, renetta spence Spencer on there who originally done oh for real song. yeah uh, that's I was, crazy. I I was, know that. man i was like man i saw her and her daddy for yeah. her yeah. daddy um uh, ronnie spence how did you shout how did you how did you come up with that song as far as how you would lay the star it out? baby yeah so Boy Baby by Big Mo was one of my favorite songs growing up. Like when I got on to the Texas mu music scene, like junior high, from junior high going to high school, like I was real influenced by what was going on in Texas. Okay. Lil Flip, Swisher House, mm -hmm. Big Mo Fat, all that, you know what I'm saying? All the way up until the DSRs, you know what I'm saying? All the way, you know, of course, just everything that was going on in Texas during that time, I was real influenced by. Like I was one of the I was one of the me and my homies in high, and junior high and high school. We was the one that was like breaking Texas music to. We was the prideful ones. Like we, everybody was jamming this. We was always putting people on the Texas shit first. Mm -hmm. And if something would come out of Dallas, like when DSR came out, I would I would even say like me and my homies, we probably the ones blew up, help blew up DSR because we was that type. Like we we was real prideful. I always been prideful about what we got. You know what I'm saying? So. When the Texas move can't move a movement came or just the stuff that was coming out of Houston and even Dallas and just you know uh, 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 UGK and all that, I was that was sticking to me. You feel me? So long long story short, Barbie was one of my favorite songs out of all the songs. It was just like a real song that I love. So for me, uh, Mr. E, what's crazy? Me and Mr. E, he produced it. He reproduced the track. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. Mr. E, shout out to Mr. E. You know he he. He did a lot, like a lot of work with Big Chief for the ones yeah. who don't know, like yeah. the sound behind Big Chief. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. Mr. E. He the one that do these triple D movies. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
for the ones who ain't from somebody had mistake me for Miss D last right. night. Right? Yeah, y'all kind of no, not look alike. Like, bro, don't no. start that. <laughs> just the name because I'm E C E O, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. and somebody was like, "Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, Mister E." I'm like. That ain't me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nah. But Mr. I like me, me and him talked on the phone a couple of times. Yeah, Mr. E, cool, man. He uh, shout so, out to Mr. E. So, man, what's crazy? So back in like I want to say 2014 or 2015, man, Mr. E was just chopping it up, and I had told him I was like, bro, I want to, cause Mr. E got this sound. He got this sound. Cause when, even from the stuff he did from Big Chief, he got like his own little sound. Like it's a, it's a Dallas sound. It's a Texas sound. It's just his own. Sound, you feel me? And I, when I would think about certain stuff, I would be like, "This is something Mr. E could do." So when I would start thinking about like people from Dallas that could create a unique sound, Mr. E is one Mr. of the e. ones that okay. come up. You know what I'm saying? Because I like I like producers like that. That you know what I'm saying? Like that can create just their own. Right. So, so back then we were talking about some stuff, and then I had told him I was like, "Bro, like I, I want to." It's a lot of Texas music that if it if it if it, it kind of hit the got back out to the mainstream now, especially since, you know, the internet, boom, mm -hmm. some of this stuff will pop. So I was like, I'm, I'm, I want to redo some of my favorite songs. And, you know, it was like, you know, it was like I wanted to redo like a little flip song. It was, it was I was naming stuff. And then we, we talked about Bar Baby. But at that time, I didn't have a concept right when we first talked about it. But um, when I came with the Star Baby, it was, a, it was a lot of things that came to mind. Like, I really just wanted to pay homage to Big Mo and make a dope record, reintroduce that to, you know, uh, the, the world in my own way. And I think yeah. about Dallas Star, the yeah. Cowboy. Oh, that's, that, exactly. That, 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 yeah. yeah, that came later. Like, so we actually did the song in 2014, 2015. Okay. Oh. You know what I'm saying? But not the, but we, we did a reference of the song. And then okay. I just, we did a couple, we probably did four or five, six songs where we was just going to do this whole project. Like, I'm just going to redo some stuff. That was just with the mold energy I was in at that time. But we never did follow through with the project. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We just did these songs. They just sat. And then uh, I think maybe about a year and a year and a half ago, something happened where we got back on the line and we revisited the conversation. And, uh, you know, we the first one we was like, we, we did Star Baby. Star you know what Baby. I'm saying? And I, and I just was like, I'm going to flip Bar Baby to Star Baby just to kind of talk about, you know, how I feel about myself and what I'm doing and just but I want to keep that same cadence keep the same sound and just introduce it and then you know I'll by now from 2014 now I was really tied in with the Cowboys so I was like well I might as well tie in you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. the start with it you know what I'm saying just you know we just dropped the video and it's a lot of Cowboy content Really, just to show off the start, and even though you know we lost, I'm still the ride or die cowboy. <laughs> for sure. Cowboys gonna be here forever, so that's a part of my brand. You feel me? Just right. in general, like even before I was with the Cowboys, I was rock. I mean, I've always been a cowboy yeah, fan. Right you feel me? I yeah, wore right. a cowboy hat, this Come and this on, and man. that. So now being yeah. official with them, you know, I, that's a part of my brand. You feel well, me? Baby, so, did you have to get clearance for that song? Well, for Star <laughs> Baby? to do Star Baby uh, from. No. Uh, Bar baby people. No, nah, cause it's it's a flip and it's a remake of the beat, so we didn't sample nothing. But what normally happens is, uh, like on the publishing end and all this stuff, you know what I'm saying. I always, if I ever do anything like that, I always just take care of stuff with the publishing and that yeah. side. Because as an artist and and uh, producers, that's what you want. Like I, yeah. I like when people flip, flip and you know, make flip. the song yeah, over. It, yeah, it, we, that's it that's brings too. more light on bring more light on your song, and then it's another revenue opportunity. So exactly. every 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 artist should want that. You feel me? Yeah. And uh, I, I ain't never had no no issues. What about but that was just a really paying homage type thing? Too, correct. You know? What what about the little girl? That's mm -hmm. what I was going. Oh, to ask so too. that's that's another reason why I like Mr. E. So Mr. E, one of my favorite dudes when it comes to music, like and just. Producers, cause he bigger than just a producer, but let's just call him a producer, cause he a real producer. Mm -hmm. Like I hit Mr. E, and I was like, "Hey, bro, I need you. You gotta find a girl, a little girl that can sing. It gotta sound like it can't be. I, it, it got to the ear. It gotta sound good, and it gotta pretty much sound like Bar Baby, cause mm -hmm. that's what I was going for. We're saying Star Baby, and he he found the right girl with the right voice. You know, he he and he he'll go through a project thoroughly. You feel me, like. So that's why he's so good, even with the movie. Like he gonna go through. I remember when uh, when Big Chief was had they movement. Like Mr. E is one of the guys that's on the street. He know how to push a record. So Mr. E know to follow through with whatever he. We put out music back then, passing out CDs. He know that whole game. He know how to hit the city. 
I used to like that because every time that's how I moved back in the day. I was a real one deep in the views, moving around in the streets, mm-hmm. moving my stuff around. Like, and I would see how Miss only other person I saw that moved like that was Mister E. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, one day I need to cloud because I, I need somebody that I um, that, that that do that. You feel me? So that was one of my favorite things I liked about Mister E. e. And I, so I know if I hit Mister E about something to get done, he gonna get it done. How many projects you have with him? We only. We don't really have this. Is actually, the first song that we officially put out. Yeah, mm. but they, we he just always loved his sound. Yeah, right. yeah. I just we right. just we always been behind the scenes talking, but we do got a lot of music that we done that just we haven't released. put out. Yeah, we just mm-hmm. ain't been released yet. So it'll be a lot of stuff that come out. But this probably the first one. But I just like uh, how he moved as far as just how he gets stuff done. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, that's that's rare. People, everybody want to say they can get stuff done, or that's rare. People don't get stuff done. You feel me? Like. I'm talking when he get to some tedious stuff he need done, and, and I knew I could miss, hit Mr. E to get that done because it's hard mm-hmm. to come across, like, kids and stuff that can sing. You, I mean, the right stuff, get them in the studio to get it done, especially when you're moving around, like how I be moving around. Yeah. So I needed somebody like Mr. E that could just get that particular thing done. Yeah, yeah. And, Mr. and he e, made it happen. He made it happen. So when, he, when he made that happen, then I was inspired to because re, I re-recorded the song. Did that, so then I got inspired because I was like, "This is exactly the sound that I wanted." Like, he, it sounded he, he really, really good. Exactly how I wanted it. Uh, mm-hmm. But overall, it was a pale homage thing. It was just like I'm redoing one of my favorite songs. Like, you know, what I'm saying, and and I want to bring, you know, that Texas sound. That's why we did hit a lick. Well, you know, man, South Walker. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna talk before about you get that into that. So. Um, have you ever worked with uh, Mr. Lee? So Mr. Lee is another one. So Mr. He Lee was just is, here. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. so Mr. Lee, and what's crazy is Mr. Me and Mr. Lee run into each other so much and talk about this, you know what I'm saying, where I know I, I could foresee what's happening, like me and Mr. Lee gonna come together and do a project just because we done talked about it so much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I and he's another one. You got <laughs> Mr. Lee, you know what I'm saying, Mr. E is that version of it. Mr. Lee from Dallas, but Mr. Lee is kind of connected with Houston. You know what I'm saying? Definitely like, connected with Houston. Yeah, so, but so like, it's only certain people like that. You only got like a very few, uh, a handful of people like that. So Mr. Lee is another one that uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to get in. We always talk about it. You I know made, what I'm saying? I gave Mr. Two, two, hold on, I'm going to say this word on my mind. Two people that I know I'm going to do projects with, that I've been talking to with forever, that's, that's, that's legends in the game, that's from our city, is uh, Mr. Lee and uh, S1. S1. Okay. Man, S1. Why S1? Man, it's one actually. I went to a studio one day. We actually started working on on some stuff, and uh, it's one man. He he one of the hardest. Like he 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 just got a sound. It's one is is fire. Like he. I like to interview him. Yeah, you know, it's one is that guy. Like he not talked about enough when it comes to certain stuff. When it comes to the city, like he 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 really that guy when it comes to what he do. You know what I'm saying? And uh. I know me and S1, especially where I'm going with my brand, especially the road brand and the music. I, I know me and him can make a, a project that's that's something special. For someone you know? like me who don't know who S1 is, what have he done? So he produced a lot of stuff, man. He, one track y'all would probably know is uh, The Power for Kanye. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He produced that. Uh, he does stuff with Hov, man. Uh, I want to say his, re- man, his resume, resume is strong. You know what I'm saying? But I know him. Personally, from the produ- this productions that he produced for me, that we've actually worked on. So, like I say, I'm the type of person where your resume is one thing, but if I go in a studio, with, that's where I'm gonna be I- impressed by. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he got tracks that he done made and that I done heard that he didn't even made for me. That's just on some next level. I wasn't even ready to record on that when we was doing it. I was able to do it, but the way I was moving and the way I was putting my brand out, I was like, nah, I gotta, I, I need to build some stuff up before I come do this S1 project. This S1 project is like, hey, we for to run this, we for to be on some Rock Nation type. It's for to be, you know what I'm saying? It's one oh, of them it's type things. Be so you gotta kind of be in mindset and position to do that level of a project. You feel me? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So S1 is like somebody like on my list, like, all right, boom, I'm going to put S1. He down here towards the bottom because this one we feel to really get to a whole nother level, and I know S1 can help catapult that as far as on production. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of producers that I work with that's on my team that can do that. Q Smith, shout out to him. Uh, Digi Norm. Um, yeah, shout out Digi Norm. He's been on here too. Yeah, Digi Norm, uh, Q Smith, uh, Too Much. Uh, 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 man, I could probably name... A lot of them, but you know what I'm saying? Use something else because I, I, I done heard a lot about you since you left. You don't know that, though. 
Yeah, I got oh, yeah. your number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You pair view days. I, I, you was you engineering your own music. You your own. You like a one stop shop type dude. I thought that was so impressive with the people that I had the whole prime time click up here. Yeah, I had the whole thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just paint. Cat. Oh yeah, yeah. TJ, shout out TJ. Uh, Tasia Alexa. Tasia, she was Tasia. yeah, yeah. She didn't want to claim it, but I said yeah, nigga, yeah. you prime time yeah, yeah. click. She was she I said yeah, you she was, was there. coming to some of the shows. Like yeah, Tasia she was said. In the I, yeah, sure. I say, yeah. and uh, but they always valued your work ethic. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that because they all couldn't be lying on you. It was yeah. a respect for the way that you, the way that you grind. Especially that's the same thing that uh, 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 Watt said. Same thing. Like yeah, he, yeah. he does, he has this particular way he wants something. He's gonna make it happen that way. Yeah, and I like yeah. that. Man, that's a hustler, man. Yeah, yeah. Now when I uh. I mean, when I got that's there, early on. Yeah, when I got another PV, I just saw what it was. I saw an open, a open field. You know what I'm saying? I, I was coming out of hoop, and I was trying to choose if I was gonna rap a hoop, but it was never no nothing. So you, you kind of automatically had the hustle. You feel me? I, that was just naturally in me. I don't know really. That might come from my pops or something. Just yeah. a grind. But uh, I just saw everything like I'm trying to do something, and it ain't no. This, 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 and that. So that means I'm gonna have to do it myself. I'm gonna have yeah. to get these things myself. Cause otherwise, I would just go to these things. I'm thinking about what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to make happen, what I'm trying to create. If 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 it's an easy way to do it, then of course, cause I'm really just trying to focus on what I'm create. But not coming from how we come from, even coming from the city of Dallas, you gotta be some type of hustler. I don't care what nobody say. You gotta get it out the mud some kind of way. It's impossible not to. And that's what, and whatever you do, whatever you do, it ain't got to just be music. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the, just the way the city was structured and a lot of resources that's even here now ain't been here. You know what I'm saying? And, this, and we still lack some resources in some in some ways. Yeah. But with that being said, the flip side of it is it make you a hustler. Make you that's a why hustler. when I, I can go to a place like L.A. and, Kind of out hustle everybody in my own way because just by coming from Dallas, I'm naturally doing it. I, I gotta you know stop I mean? you because that's what Taylor Taylor said the same thing. Taylor Gabriel, that okay. played for the for oh, yeah. Atlanta Falcons and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm from Dallas. Like, I got to go do it. I'm like, it's something in yeah, him that kept yeah. saying, man, I'm from Dallas. Like, when you when you're from <laughs> Dallas and you go to other cities, and you start actually saying what you made of, what Dallas made of you. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You yeah. don't know that being in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know this until I moved to L.A. L.A., yeah. Like, and I just noticed how I was moving, and, and people would pick up on it, but it was just natural. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I started realizing, like, oh, because other, it's other people that I could, you know what I'm saying, shout out that, you know, I run into people like like in L.A., like, uh, shout out to Hood Boss, you know what I'm saying? Okay, shout out, you know shout out saying? Hood Boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just run into a lot of people. from When I would run into people from Dallas and L.A. or different places, they always was making something happen. They was always making something happen better than other people. And then I'd just be like, it got to be the city. Like, there's just no naturally how to hustle if they from Dallas for some yeah. reason. When you just get in another app, your instincts keep kicking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I start seeing even people that's behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? I meet people and I can just be, and I'm like, they move out like they from Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Wow, it's that's just, dope. It's hard to explain. Now, when you go to other cities, the other cities notice that and you start noticing about yourself because people... By the way people move, the way they talk to you, the way they even say, you know, this, this, and that. But long story short, like, the flip side of not having those resources in the city turn you into a hustler in some kind of way, which benefits you in another way. Wow. So you might be, you know, you might feel like, oh, well, shit, we don't got this, this, and that, but it's a benefit to everything. You know, you, you're going to learn how to hustle. You get somewhere else, you're going to see you're going to be the number one hustler in a, in a sense. Number one hustler. Like, you're going to have some type of instincts. That you get from your city. And every city got them. Every city got their own side. Somebody from New York come to Dallas right now and they live here and they're no like they going to be a certain way. They're going to be moving. Then we going to see it. We going to know this like. How they move. Yeah, exactly. And to them, that's just how they move and vice versa. And then some of it's going to work against of it, against them and some of, some of gonna it's going to work, work for them. them. That's right. You know what I'm so it just be like that. And then, you know. When I went to L.A., that's what I would notice. Hey, check it out. Money Moses hey. just pulled up. Hey. Why you just pulled up on us, man? What's going on? on yeah, I was in traffic trying to get here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's, what's your biggest goal for 2022? Hey. 2022. What? So 2020, now this the year. See, the last time, I think I said, I don't know if I said it, but the last year, the last time I was on the, uh, the podcast, I was pretty much telling, talking about what's to come and really kind of gearing up to like now 2020 is about, for the go crazy with it, you know what I'm saying? 2022 for the go what it do. Just with the with the music and the, and the product and the and the uh, 
content and just everything that I've been working on. So to answer your question, really the music, you know what I'm saying? You like, a little harder? Yeah, I mean, you like, see, we already... Like, more, push more. Yeah, I see. I like to start, baby. That thing already, going yeah, in. We are already at the gate with one record. That's just... We just we just want... We just building up right now. Like, you know, we getting the, we getting the buzz. But, you know, my, my goal for 2022 is to, is to really... Uh, is to really put out all the music. And it's really that simple because the music gonna do the rest, you feel yeah. me? At the end of the day, I'm a rapper first, I'm an artist first, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna give people the art, I'm gonna give people the rap, I'm gonna give people the music. And uh, But you know, sometimes the setup to it is it's a process. If you wanna do it a certain type of way, you got other stuff going on, you know what I'm saying? It ain't just, oh, cause I wanna put out music, let's just go, nah, you gotta, you know, put put stuff together. That's kinda what I did it? in the past couple How of different years. is it from from when you uh, say, since the internet wave fir first came in, and now traveling through COVID times and all the stuff that's changed, how different is it for you? It's better for me. Like, the way that things is, is how I naturally move. Like, I'm a type of person where, you know, when it's grimy, that's kind of when, that's when I, like, Thrive, you feel me? Yeah. When when stuff yeah. is difficult, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I I come out of difficult type settings. I would even say better than when stuff is easy flowing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that that's what I want or prefer. It just that's just what it is. What so it is. COVID, a lot of people, you know, to it's, to each zone. You got some people feel this way about it, this and that. It's hard to do this, easier to do that. For me, it's gravy. You know what I'm saying? Like I I don't put a lot of work. Just over over time to where you know, for me, it's just about it's about the music now again. You know, it's always been there about that. As long as I'm giving people the music, then they get then I'm doing what I'm supposed to do for the most part. Cause when it comes to the, the art and stuff, I'm gonna do what I need to do. They'll do the songs with just the come to you like at night. You sleeping in the bed, uh -huh. <laughs> the road sleep, yeah, and they be like, "Damn, yeah. that's a hit! I got to get up yeah, to write I'm, this." I'm, I'm, a, I I'm, a, yeah, I'm a life writer. Like, have I can't, you done I can't, that before? That's how I do. I, I don't go to the studio and write music. I never have. I probably only done that one or two times. Like, I never I'm, understood uh, that. Yeah, yeah, like you, you won't do it like that. Right now, some people, some people, some people, some people gotta be in the studio to work to be creative. I, I'm the opposite. Like I cannot. It, I mean, I can do features like that. Somebody I can pull up, we can do that. But that ain't my way to work. You know what I'm saying? I like it just in real life. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I might be on a flight. I might be at the crib. I might be moving around. I might be at a hotel. I might just be navigating in the light. And sometimes it do be like sometimes like you, you can uh, see something like, damn, that's yeah, a song. Exactly. Or like a that. line can come see me. Yeah. I be once I get one line, it's a rap. All I ever need is one line that come to me naturally. Whole song done. You know what I'm saying? So like I, I can just. But it got to be something I feel or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, it just, we just catch a, 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 a vibe, you know. When man Norm T did the little thing for the Cowboys, the big touchdown, you know what I'm saying? Once, once, uh, we once he came with the beat and and we just kind of it was a quick vibe. It was more just like I was already talking about like I need to do something more generic. So once I came with a it's a touchdown, big touchdown line. I was just able to ride through it from the whole way. I boom. But sometimes it could take me a minute to catch that vibe. You know what I'm saying? With something. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I can go. How was it with hit a lick? Hit a lick. That was that was that was that was that was a more easy. That was more like a freestyle. You know what I'm saying? That I can kind of feel it. Yeah, yeah. That was more like once I get anything that's on that type of vibe with like that's that's kind of first nature. Like I can just kind of play with the song. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hit a lick was uh we did that a while back. Me and South did that like in 2017. We put really that, yeah. so that was that was y'all yeah. just decided to go just, ahead. yeah like it be like that because it's, it's a it's a timeless vibe. When there, anytime you know some like on some Texas shit like that, it, it, that's always gonna be a familiar sound that we got. So we didn't have to put that out so fast. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like how do you keep up with all them songs? <laughs> That's the hard, hard part. Drives. That's the hard Man, part. can you I, sing that? I, I mean, can you go word for word on every song? Walk well, that walk, hit a lick. Uh, hit yeah, not, hit stuff, a lick. From stuff. hit a lick to walk that walk to, I want to catch one that he ain't even thinking about. There, and one of them that just on that first album that you just wasn't just singing all the time, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, man, I done probably done so many shows that the songs I perform, like, once, once I'm in that mode, I'm in that mode. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I come from where everything was on the spot. And I tell people this all the time. I think that was another thing that was a, a I, some people can say it's an advantage or a disadvantage. During a time where we was coming out during that Boogie, Dallas Boogie era, 
that was the first time Dallas was getting attention from mainstream or however you want to look at it or in a rap way. So what it taught me, because everybody was coming, I was a mixtape rapper. I used to have a lot of mixtapes. That's how I got PV popping. I was just mixtape. Everybody knew me for rapping, mixtapes, kind of like freestyles, boom, boom, boom. I, I had no singles, none of that. When the Dallas Boogie movement came, that's when they was coming with them dance songs. You had Lil Shine with the Check Out My Lean and Fat Pimp them was out with the Rack Daddy, boom, boom, boom. And everybody was coming with these Lil Will had my Dougie. Bone, Bone yes. say he had his song after you, but he didn't like you because he said you was everything he was trying to do, you was already yeah, doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ball, man. He, he, but TV. he respected you. He's yeah. another one that he on yeah. the show. He was, was competitive. He was one of oh, the, he was say, competitive at PD. Then he, he, was, he was like Dero, man. He different. He was one like he just a workhorse, man. He respects so, you a lot. When I got the PV, everybody was a rapper, but nobody rapped. That was the first thing I noticed. Everybody was a rapper. Like when I say everybody was a rapper. Freestyle sessions was everywhere, all around the campus. Lunt, boom, uh, uh, everybody in their dorm rooms, like everybody rapped. But then when nobody a rapper, I was like, how how does everybody rap? And then I had figured that out quick. I was like, ain't nobody really doing it. So I was like the first one at PV that uh, we we had these things called Hump Day. Hump Day is where it's yeah pump, yeah we heard yeah. about y'all Hump yeah, Day. Yeah, 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 so, party at twelve at, in the midday. Yeah, right yeah. in the middle of the dang day. And it's packed. You know what I'm saying? So the first time I went to Hump Day and saw that. I was like, I, I didn't understand like how when nobody didn't see what I saw. What I saw was a lot of people in the opportunity. You wanted so, to rap at that thing. Yeah, so I, I was the first one to go up and grab the mic and rap at Hump Day. And, what did and, you rap? Do you remember? I, I did a song called, uh, so you remember I was telling you I had mixtapes popping. On that mixtape, I had a uh, song called Bitch, I'm from Dallas. Hey! And, and it was off the hood, nigga, Gorilla Zobo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like it was popping on the mixtape. Everybody fuck with it on the mixtape. You were hitting nobody, that up. Nobody really know, knew me like by face except the people who knew me. You know what I'm saying? Because this is when I was a freshman. And uh, like, yeah, I was a freshman. And uh, everybody else was pretty much upper class. So only people who knew me knew me. So I would see Hump Day and uh, DJ Merck would be DJing. You know what I'm saying? I knew who Merck was. I saw it as an opportunity. Like, if I go up here and grab this mic, everybody finna know who I am now. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm gonna rap. They gonna either like me or not. And I was the first person to do that. And that's really how I literally turned PV out. Because once I did that, I remember the first reaction. Everybody just stirred. Like it was even the people who knew me and knew my shit was hard. They would just stir everybody. Like it was just it was something shocking because nobody that had thought done he it. Gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was more that type did of it, energy. Did it discourage you or did it encourage you? It for to me, it just was what it was. I remember how I was feeling that day. I was just like. Cause I wasn't gonna stay at PV. Like I, I was a hooper. You feel me? I was oh, to, I know. I've been seeing. I, I was supposed to go. I had a scholarship to St. Mary's, which is St. San Antonio, which was a good basketball school. It was like you had more opportunity than PV. You feel me? I had went to PV because my mama. Uh, she she was just she was like, come on. I had a big bro that went to PV. She was like, you need to just go down to the freshman orientation. Just give yourself some options. And I went down to the orientation. It was like. The first thing that they said at the orientation was PV was seven to one, and I was like seven to one what? And it was seven females to one. I had I, I I wasn't aware that like school was like that. See, in my mind, I didn't even know college, especially when you see my HBCUs or college in general. It's more female, way more females in college than dudes. At least at that time, to me, I just saw that like why wouldn't I have been there in PV? It was just a whole different. It was a whole different thing. You feel me? I wanted, and then I saw that with my own eyes as being, you know what I'm saying, a teenager or whatnot. So I stayed down there from for, for orientation, and I and then I, I met somebody that, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a little chick. Shout out to her. She knows she is. She, you know, I stayed out there <laughs> with her like for like a week, and by then, by after that week, I was like, oh, I'm going to PV. Because I had just saw enough, and you know what I'm saying, because deep down, even though I was hoping I had more opportunity then, I wanted to rap more. I was already popping in high school from rapping, but it was just more into me. I felt like I could control my uh, my destiny with rap than sports. Sports is, you know, it's orchestrated. You got to do the right everything. You got to go through the right system. Right, You got to have the right coach. You can't get hurt. You know what I'm saying? You can have to be the best player, get hurt at the wrong time. It's over. It's just so – games are set up time-wise – where rapping, you can at any given moment, somebody right now can go drop a song and go somewhere and promote it right now and and, if, and get it popping. You know what I'm saying? So that type of thing, I was just like, nah, I'm going to do this music shit. So I Man. saw PV as an open field for that. And you then killed I, it. Did your mama ever get mad? 
Nah, she didn't get mad because she was glad I went to PV. But she, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna hoop at PV too. I was gonna, you know what I'm saying, uh, like walk on and. Even though the coach, everybody knew I was, I had like a guaranteed position. Like I was a baller, you know what I'm saying, especially at the time. But the rap, like I say, within that first week, I knew I went for the hoop. You rap hard. I saw, no, nah, I just saw too much. I just Bro. saw. It was like going, you got to, I'm coming from Dallas. I went to Lancaster High School. Yeah, I know. And, and, and you know what I'm saying, high school was fun, but like when you get the PV, it was like all the Dallas schools and all the Houston schools as one high school. So it's just that to me, it was just this place and it was a party school. It was about partying like nobody went. It wasn't about work. No. It wasn't about none of that. Like you say, Hump Day was at hump noon. Day was at and, noon. and that's a that's that was a popping party every every Wednesday. And you knew that you were gonna tell so that thing. Just down. See you have a question. Yeah. So So my question was, um, so whenever you were on stage for the first time and you took the mic and did all of that, did you motivate any of the other so-called rappers to jump on stage and do So the what's same. crazy is is I when I did it that first time, I remember getting that reaction. I said, fuck it, I'm gonna do it the next time. I did it the next week. And then it was a different kind of reaction, but it was the same thing. By then I was so like I was just so like, nah, I gotta make this shit shake. Cause even when I did it, I, I was kinda like I couldn't even believe I did it myself because it was just, it just wasn't like that. It wasn't nothing nobody was doing. By the third time, I was just like, I'm gonna just do this every confident. Wednesday. That confidence next thing you went know, out, didn't Next thing you know, because I was dropping, one thing I was doing was I was dropping mixtapes. Like, I had, team, I had a team of people and girls passing out CDs through the campus. So I was really, I, people had already knew who I was and they, they was kind of like, a, oh, that's the dude that got this type of city. It became that. So once that happened, you know, I was just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna do this shit. And then I, I would do that every hump day almost. And then I just got popping. And I was the only one to do that. Nobody will ever do it. Cause it's, it's hard to do. Like, it's harder than what it seemed. Like, you know, uh, people, I know so many people that is talented that they won't take that leap. Take that leap, they, yeah. They, they it's that fear. Fear. You feel me? They don't False. want that. That process, I don't care what type of rapper or artist you are, it's no matter how big you are or how good you are, it's a process you go through when it ain't gravy. Like, it's just hard. Like, you ain't getting that support. It, it's just, it's a weird, uncomfortable time, and no, nobody want to go through that part. Yeah, yeah that part they, it gets you all the way. That's the part you got to go through to get to the other side of it. Nobody want that. And but that's it what, makes you or break you. It, it do make you or break you. But I, I don't seen people that really could have and should have been doing it and they just didn't go through that process that was literally it like they hit everything else yeah you know what i'm saying it was a lot of like people like that at people i'd be like damn nigga in the in the in the in the, in the dorm room nigga y'all going hard we all going hard in the freestyle session we all doing this and so it was a lot of people that i was kind of fans of because i was i felt like people could do it but i don't know i just i just hit that that thing in me that's just going i'm just gonna do it i hit that that factor you feel me yeah. I'm gonna make this shit happen, like, yeah. and and you know what I'm saying. People fuck with the music, and I think people scared that fear. Yeah, yeah that people fear. scared that fear. But so, me, so by the third time, I was popping though. By the third, fourth time, now you know rocking it out. Yeah, now people are expecting it. I'm rocking it out. You know what I'm saying. And Bone jealous because he want to be up there now. <laughs> See, Bone them never did that. That's, That's right. But he doing, wanted you know to be saying? up there. He like I yeah. should be up there. Yeah. So it was just really a matter. Anybody could have went and did it. But you you it, you it, found it open lane. Yeah. So you know, then it started. They start having talent shows at PV. I wasn't even in a talent show. I just pull up and just rap whatever song I had put out. I would just go, man, this is a way to promote this song. Like, at the talent show without being in the talent show. So I just started using PV like that, man. And, uh, you know, uh, then they had some called the PV Choice Awards. I had one, like, Best Rapper hey. type shit. You know what I'm saying? This is about the third year because then it started getting competitive. Like, people started dropping mixtape. It started turning into a market. That's why you had some people come out of PV at yeah. that time. It turned into a real thing. But... We got it popping, man, and uh, that's just what it was. That's the way it is, mm -hmm. man. When you when you get it popping, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I, and I'll go back to that uh, hit a lick when y'all did that video. Y'all was somewhere in Dallas. Yeah, we we shot was that uh, Joe Pool or where was y'all at? No, no, actually, oh, Saint we, Lake Ray Hubble, Where was y'all at? We was at uh, Texas Ski Ranch. That's, okay, that's in uh, that's by San Antonio actually. That's oh, by, so y'all uh, down by San Antonio? That's and what city is it? Uh, I should. What city was that? Oh, okay, sure. No, uh, I forgot. It's right by San Antonio, in between San Antonio and Austin. Uh, I forgot the actual city, but it's called Texas Ski Ranch. Really? They they do concerts at the ski ranch. I was booked there two weeks before we shot that video, and uh, we did a show with me and uh, Young Blue. The, uh, we had a show there, and then uh, 
when I did the show, I, when I was leaving the show, I saw the flyers. They was promoting South Walker. Man, Sauce Walker uh, had missed the time we was going to shoot his scene in Dallas. So I was like, I, I liked the ski ranch. I was impressed by it. And I saw he had a show. So I was, I just told South that shit, I'm going to come down for the show. And we're going to shoot this scene down Dope. there. Because I was like, shit, nigga, I already see what you're seeing for the B. We already seen the boats and stuff like yeah. that. We ran it out. Brought, we brought, you know, I brought his scene. We brought the girls and just had fun, really. We just had a little time. kickback, a little party, turned into his scene for the video. The other stuff we shot in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. we shot, you know what I'm saying, Fuel so City do you, and William Chicken and all that. Do you, uh, Bun B, do you... Uh, um, I, I seen you on a picture with Bun. Uh, yeah. What does what, what? I know you spoke you spoke UGK's name, but yeah. we we've been tributing uh, uh, Pimp C. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. just I always ask people what Pimp C meant to him. You know, for yeah. Texas people. You know, like us. Yeah. So I'm I'm upset because Pimp C is like one of the only Texas legends that I didn't get to meet. I got yeah, popping. I, I got popping it. right after he you know passed whatever. So because in that time I, it was a when I was at PV and it was popping. That's when I was in the mix in Houston, and I was meeting everybody at this time. I was meeting Lil Flip and everybody, Paul Wall and Slump Thug, just by moving around, going to the clubs, and and I was anticipating meeting Pimp C, but it had, you know, he had passed, so I didn't get to meet him. But as far as what he mean, you know what I'm saying? Every, UGK, Pimp C, Bon B, they mean everything. Even Bon B, like to this day, one of my favorite things about Bon B that I still that I uh, you yeah. fuck with is. He brought, he he capitalized on the lingo, you know what I'm saying? Even the trill and shit. That's why I say even start, baby. I say trill OG. That's really a, that's really a bum B phrase. But it's Texas. I, I'm basically trying to encourage artists like, look, nigga, we got culture out here. Y'all, y'all need to use this shit. Y'all gonna win by using our culture. That's right. Texas culture, Dallas culture, even Houston artists, y'all use that culture. In Houston, they got, I, I forgot who got their record. It's popping right now. They redid the My Dougie. The, 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 the tone of Houston you know, did? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I want to say, don't quote me, I, I, I want to say it's, it's Fast Lane. I think he redid the song, but it, if it wasn't him, it was somebody. But it's popping in the clubs out there. Really? It's not the Dougie, it's just the the, the same cadence. The same cadence. The, you, you know it when you hear it, same what you call it. But the song popping, though, you know what I'm saying? So it, it I, I be telling people all the time, like, if we use our shit, we win more. You're going to win faster using our own shit that we already got. I agree with you that 100%. Saying? Then trying to bro. go sound like these niggas in Atlanta and Chicago. Yeah. They got their own shit. You That's feel right. Me? They going to win from that shit. Yeah. You feel me? Like, we got shit that we can use. Yep. The people people use it. So when I do stuff like Star Baby and Hit a Lick, other than my own reasons for doing it for just my own artist shit, I'm actually trying to inspire motherfuckers to, to play on that same thing. From from Dallas and, and and Texas and Houston and all everywhere in Texas, I'm trying to tell niggas like, yeah, I need, y'all need the new artists, y'all play on this shit that we already got. Mm -hmm. Y'all can do it in y'all own way. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to do it how I'm doing it or how anybody else do it. But no, we got shit that y'all can use that'll help y'all win me, easier and better than how y'all trying to play. It. Let me ask you this, man. The way you be, did you have something you want there? Yeah. The way you be, uh, you sound like your music when you talk. I can hear you. Oh music. yeah, I don't got no and, rap voice. No, like I don't turn like, my. But no, I like like, I know that if I hear you in a concert, that I'm gonna get. We went the to Jay Z concert. We went to Jay Z concert. I've never seen nothing like this, bro. His he sounded exactly like his song. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. like you can tell no different. Like you were just listening to the song. Yeah. But I knew it wasn't because he would change it up and yeah. stuff. Well, that that happened because you know a lot of people when they get in the studio even successful rappers have an actual rap voice. Like they know how to turn into a character, which is cool, but it's not necessarily they talking voice. So in Jay-Z, that's his talking voice. You know what I'm saying? He sounds sound, just, just you like you. So, like, yeah, yeah. And so like, Jada Kiss too. J exactly. And Ja Rule. Yeah, exactly. So, and DMX RIP. So when you when you when people use their talk, talking voice as their rap voice, when you see them in concert, it translates better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you get sound that, real it, good. Yeah, yeah, it translates better. People say that about my my shows, you know, they translate because I don't really turn on a rap voice, but some people got a rap voice or sometimes when you're a singer, you automatically got a certain different voice from how you sound. That's like, you know what I'm saying? Some people voice be deeper. Like or, Miss L.A., remember her? Huh, who? Miss L.A.? Miss who? He, he too young. <laughs> Miss L.A., she music. had a... I remember uh, her name. Who's that face? Some people say I'm nasty. She would the uh, Dr. Dre. Song. He know. But, but, my but, boy know. But yeah, my like, boy know yeah, back like there. Sometimes it happened a lot with singers. I got singers. this youngster over here now. It happened, <laughs> it happened more with singers where they voice, 
they when they sing it's something different because yeah. got, most time they got to change their tone. But nah, man. nah, you dope, man. I I, I can hear it. I know already. You, I told you last time you was here. You you like. Automatic commercial sound here, <laughs> like your, you know, like it's crossover sound. You already, your, your. To me, it's like you could do songs with anybody. Now I don't know if you choose to do songs with anybody. I'm talking about popping all that. Yeah, yeah. To me, yeah, nah, man. I'm nah, being man, real. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, my my goal is to work with, just put myself in a space where I can I can do everything. That's why I got. Have you ever done a pop song or anything? Yeah, I have actually. I done um, so I had did. I don't know if y'all know. The cataracts. Cataracts. All right, so the cataracts, they from the bay. They they was this white they was actually like pop country, but they was super big. Uh and uh they they had like did like some remix of ice cream paint job in the country thing and they had me get on that. It was a big record in Cali. It was oh, like yeah? number one. Yeah. I mean, I'd have done actually quite a few of them. It just you know what I'm saying, uh just when they came out, they came out. Some stuff is released in different ways, but me, I, I just see beats, bro. I just see it ain't no category to me. Like I can rap on anything. I'm gonna adjust to it, you know. I just hear the music. Uh, as long as it got a rhythm to it, I'm gonna figure out a cadence that makes sense. It's just I'm gonna just do me on it. Man, Duro, dope, man. Duro, you move like hey. you're supposed to, man. How do you stay mm -hmm. positive? That's why I say he moves like he' supposed to. Staying away from the negative. I, nah, I, it's really, dope. It's, it's but really it's hard though. Yeah, I know. It's just you. You get what you put out. You gotta. That's it, true. It, it's a, um, it's out from, as a rapper. It's in the, it's in the music you put out. See, people don't know when this, the the magic with this music shit is. You gonna live in the world that you put out. So, and I learned this. That's one thing that I could say. Like songs like "Walk That Walk," and I learned this early when I was making them songs because like my world would turn into that. Like when I made "Walk That Walk," I was just like, shit. I'm at PV. I, that was the first single I made. I need to get from this mixtape shit. I see all these niggas coming out here doing shows off one song. I need to learn how to make a single. I made Walk That Walk because I, I saw, I want to I want to make something that's going to make these sorority girls dance too. That's what was popping. I'm going to make something like that. Boom. Made the song. It started blowing up. And then that's what I actually started getting that identity. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I made that right after that was Holly Berry. Then I had another song called Carmel Sunday that was yeah. popping. That was just all female records, so I kind of hit that identity. But I was cool with it because it was just like I was getting a lot of bookings that I was getting a lot of love from that. So yeah. I learned that you created like, your world with your, what you right. Yeah, because you'll be surprised. A lot of rappers don't really think they just thinking about the aspect of creating music. Like they don't really know that if that shit pop and it blow up, your life would be whatever that is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ice cream paint job. When I made that, that blew up. I, that's when my life turned into that. Get bit, boom. So I started learning easy that shit. I need to, I, I'm real when I'm making music. Like, if this ain't a world I want to live in, then I ain't going to talk about it because shit, that word shit that's real. That's real. Especially if it get traction, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might fuck around and not be uh, ever on what you're talking about. You might do one song on some shit that's just on some random and that blew up and now that's your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're right, so... I say to say to answer his question, bro. Like I just put out, I just try and create the music in the way that uh I want my 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 life, like my to world be. to be, and that's and that's gonna automatically keep me positive because I don't want you know what I'm saying. I want my shit to be a certain way, but uh you know I mean you it, it ain't that easy. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of uh distractions. You yeah, me? yeah. But, uh, well, yeah, we, but we, all the mess around in this world nowadays <laughs> and everything, yeah. and especially for musicians, it's like they feel like everything they have to put out has to be talking about woman, guns, street, yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, to yeah. to be popping, you know. Or yeah. even in like bloggers, it's like they, they, they think that yeah. it's mess that sells because that's what gets the most views. Yeah. So it's like, how can you create things that are not like that and still get the views that you need? See a oh. lot of oh, go ahead. A lot of people. Uh, that's that's the that's the hard card that's in this game because it's like if you talk about the bullshit you liable to blow up faster get quick attraction so a lot of young and new artists think with that mindset like this is what gonna get me popping but you, you know when you fight against that you might be making the best everything music and stuff but it's gonna get slow attraction but when they finally do you know what I'm saying uh, hit that you know that 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 wave where you do get traction is going to be worth it so it's like most pe it, it come down to what i was just talking about most people don't want to go through that process you they're going to always go with what's easier so i know a lot of artists and this is why i like ty i told ty this and me and crap talk about this i say 
homie, uh, you know, you're an artist that can go in a direction that don't have to be a certain type way because you're talented enough to do it. And you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of where he's going with it. So I, I like him a lot because of that reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I say this all the time. Like, it's songs I could go make right now that I know could get it popping, get it popping real fast. But it ain't necessary for the overall where I'm trying to do, and it may not be the best thing. So I don't yeah. do that. But how many people can really fight that? You know what I'm saying? When that's, you know you can big. get some, I can get this popping. I can get some money real quick. I can get going. I'm just for to do this now. See, people think like this. I'm for to do this now and get it popping. Then I switch up later. But they don't know. I hear that all the yeah, time. Yeah, but that once you get popping like that, you that shit for the take over. You can't. It's gonna be. It's not as simple as you think to. I'm finna do this now. Like, nah, you done put yourself in that world. It's gonna be kind of hard to. So you just gotta know what you wanna do. You really gotta know what you wanna do, and then you just gotta be that. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, definitely. You gotta create your own and everything. You gotta know where this is real, for real. The energy you put out is real. You gonna, you gonna get it. You know, you well, gonna we get got, it back. We gotta. Uh, we just wanna bless you with a. I think she got you a a, a hoodie for sure. Oh, okay. With oh, the Duro oh, okay. music. Got you, yeah. Appreciate that. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I hope I got your baby size baby right. Baby yeah. Baby yeah. Baby it, baby. It's so, extra large. Oh yeah, I, I rock with the extra large. Yeah. 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 We know you love blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. go. I got a lot of stuff. This cowboy blue, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got hats and everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I just wanted to make you sure we got you that. And and to be honest with you, man. I appreciate this. Carl had came. Carl Crawford came and got one. I said, man, we got to get the row because we was at the house and I said, we got to get the row. Yeah, we gotta yeah. get him one, man. He'll be he'll pop it for that. us. Yeah, no, nah, I definitely uh when I support it all, I'm definitely gonna support you. Man, know? I will appreciate you, I, man. Tag Boss custom. Talk Podcast one on one. That's a thing. Sure. Yeah, no, nah, I got But you now sure. thank you so much, that. man. You you you're a dope that. dude, man. We got also we got you a plaque, man. Oh, okay. Just saying oh, yeah, that I'm coming we, with the real yeah, 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 toy. Yeah, yeah, well we just we just want you to remember us, man. We just be wanting you to remember us, man, because because the ones who mean so much to the city and done so much, we wouldn't be here sitting if it wasn't for people like you. And we represent Dallas because there's a lot of people here in Dallas who don't get a recognition that they yeah, should. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I appreciate that, man. So I mean, we just thank God for you, bro. Nah, I appreciate it. That's real. Let me, uh, hold on, hold on. I, I should get you on the picture. Uh, he yeah, the first yeah, yeah. one to take a picture. I'll uh, get you on, get, the, on, mm -hmm. the, on, the, on the Instagram, right? Yeah. That's yeah. dope, man. Yeah, got, man. Just appreciate it. the love, man. It, it's man, going man. down, man. Let me see man. Check it, back. man. There it is right there, man. Oh, that's real. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. I no, appreciate you, bro. Nah, for real. For sure, for sure. Yeah, man. So, you know, this here, what does it so say? So, it says, Boss Talk 101 would like to present Mr. Dorwin Duro. Okay. Duro Music. Okay. In recognition for your many years in the music industry, dropping platinum hits like Ice Cream Paint Job, Talented Musician and Entrepreneur, Dope, 2022. Man. 2022, I man. That. I appreciate that for sure. Let me get that one more time. <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah, out to man. Talk man, we got to do it where we can give you roses while you're here, man. We're just showing mad love, man. I know. I appreciate like I said, that. man, that, it's just something about doing something when you got the opportunity to. That that's what we wanted to be about. I yeah. wanted to give you the first time you was here. Yeah. But uh, I it, I was like, that's why I was so like trying to get you back because yeah, yeah. I, I don't even think I mentioned it. I was like, man, I got to get him back because he means so like much. We don't like to tell you. We yeah, we were trying surprise. to surprise you. Nah, nah. I appreciate that, man. Nah, that's we care, like, man. Uh, that's all. Nah, that's the, the stuff like this is is real special to me because it's, it's unique for one. Yeah, I respect what y'all are doing, and uh, I mean y'all didn't have to do that for sure. Yeah, you know yeah. Like, like I said, I think I appreciate that a whole lot. You represent Dallas to the fullest. I oh, hardcore, it, yeah. man, no, and the keep... positivity, and just the, just the all around, just the all around dude that everybody that came in here talk about your work ethic so right. much, man. It make me think like, man, I got to grind, man. That boy, he gets to it. Man, nah, man, like I said, I learned from the city, though. You know what I'm saying? I honestly think I, that come from the city, so I'm just giving back to what I feel like gay to me. You know, I, like I say, when I go to other cities, I see what Dallas did for me, you know, just by living here. The stuff that I thought was, was hard and I was, you know, mad about when it was low resources and this and that. I learned that, you know what I'm saying, that really gave me an advantage in other places just by I had to learn how to hustle and be a certain way to move around the city of Dallas. Dallas it wasn't and ain't just the easiest city to move around to either, but the city gave me a lot, so I give back to it, so I appreciate people no, like y'all. Yeah, a lot more that. people need to take, um, need to look at what yeah. you're doing and take example from that or even try to reach out to you to say, hey, you know, can you give me some tips and stuff for it because you took your career to a different level, not just staying in the music industry, but ended up with the Cowboys and so forth. Man, he did different things that other people hadn't accomplished, <laughs> but like Money Moses last time was asking about 6'3 versus the row. I remember all the stuff that we talked about yeah. last time. Plus, I, I played the videos back because so many people, I'll, 
I'll ask questions and yours will come up and I'll always throw those clips back in there, man. But thank yeah. you for coming and uh, supporting us when we didn't really have a lot of right. lot going on. You, that I tell people, it's the seamless ones that you never forget. It's like, that guy didn't have to come over here. He didn't know who he was. He but talked he just, about it a lot. I always yeah. tell, yeah, like that yeah. guy came and I can't never forget that. So when a guy give me problems coming, I think about that. I'm throw, bro. I yeah. don't know why. Yeah. I'd be like, man, oh, the road didn't do it. I ain't going to respect you. Yeah, <laughs> I'd yeah. be tripping, man. I'm yeah. throw. Yeah. But yeah. Nah, people are different. So I got to accept that too, though. Man. Yeah. Thank you so much for nah, being genuine, bro. 100, 100%, man. I appreciate y'all. And I yeah. appreciate this for sure. I'm, I'm going to put a special place at the crib for this, man. Already, you know man. Boss Talk 101, what a boss's talk, Shout man. Boss Talk 101 for this real talk. It's going down. Hey, uh, man. It's been another. Did you uh, did you have anything? I got else? everything. Cool. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, what a boss's talk. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, Duro, this award is from Boss Talk Podcast 101. Mm -hmm. Just to tell you, thank you for all the hard work you've been doing over the years. Mm -hmm. But it says, presented to Mr. Darwin Duro, that's double D. Got that double You need a triple D. Do you have another My D? My name is Demarcus. See, yeah. so he's triple, triple D, D triple all D for around. Real. Yeah, yeah, real triple D. Duro Music in recognition for your many years in the music industry, dropping platinum hits, really after hit, ice cream paint job, Talented musician and entrepreneur. I appreciate that, man. Real man. talk. First of all, you know, uh, this is the first uh, plaque I ever got from a podcast. Podcast. So, so we first. So, yeah, so that's a first. And that's a, you know, I like that. Uh, but now I appreciate that. You know, I see the work that y'all yeah. put in. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A lot of it is on the wall. Let me know you put in a lot of work. Lot of work. When I met it and came through the last time, you know what I'm saying? I like I like the vibe, you know what I'm saying? I seen what y'all been I doing since then. So this means a lot to me, you know? Anything y'all putting on for the city, you know, uh, my favorite stuff is stuff that come from the city. You know hey, man, it, it thank ain't, you, it ain't, man. It ain't an easy thing to get that love in the you city. You're not roses while they here, man. Shout out to Boss Talk 101. But the boss is talk.